Weird Tales, March 1923. Greetings, dear listeners. Most of you have heard of Weird Tales. Weird Tales, the most famous pulp, pulp horror magazine, the unique magazine that originally published many of H.P. Lovecraft's most famous stories. But did you know it's the centenary of the first edition of Weird Tales? The first edition of Weird Tales, which was published a hundred years ago in March 1923? I became aware of this anniversary through a video by Horror Mike. There is a link to his video in the description. Thanks, Horror Mike. The first March 1923 edition of uh, Weird Tales, the unique magazine, was originally released on February the 18th. According to Wikipedia, the magazine was founded in late 1922 by J.C. Hennenberger and J.M. Lansinger, with Edwin Baird as editor. Unfortunately, within a year, Weird Tales was in financial trouble, so Hennenberger sold his interest in the magazine to Langsinger, who got the publication on a stronger financial footing and who brought in Farnsworth Wright. Farnsworth Wright as editor, beginning with the November 1924 edition. Weird Tales would continue until 1954, producing 279 total issues. That's right. 279. I counted them all using the handy charts attached to the Wikipedia article linked in the description. In addition to H.P. Lovecraft, Weird Tales would publish stories by Clark Ashton Smith, Seabury Quinn, Robert E. Howard, Robert Block, E. Hoffman Price, Edmund Hamilton, and Ray Bradbury. Fun fact. The famous playwright, Tennessee Williams, author of A Streetcar Named Desire and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, as well as many other celebrated plays, was first published by Weird Tales. The Vengeance of Nitrochris. Nitrochris appeared in the August 1928 edition under the author's full name, Thomas Lanier Williams. He was uh, 16 years old at the time. So Weird Tales first hit the stands a hundred years ago. Too bad we can't read the first edition. Ah, but we can, courtesy of Project Gutenberg. So what was in the first edition? From the Table of Contents 22 Remarkable Short Stories The Mystery of Black Jean by Julian Kilman A Story of Blood-Curdling Realism with a Smashing Surprise at the End The Grave by Orville R. Emerson a soul-gripping story of terror. Hark! The Rattle by Joel Townsley Rogers An uncommon tale that will cling to your memory for many a day. The Ghost Guard Not the Coast Guard, The Ghost Guard by Brian Irving A spooky tale with a grim background. The Ghoul and the Corpse by G. A. Wells, not H. G. Wells, G. A. Wells, an amazing yarn of weird adventure in the frozen north. Fear by David R. Solomon, showing how fear can drive a strong man to the verge of insanity. The Place of Madness by Merlin Moore Taylor, what two hours in a prison solitary did to a man. The Closing Hand by Farnsworth Wright A Brief Story Powerfully Written 
The Unknown Beast by Howard Ellis Davis, an unusual tale of a terrifying monster. The Basket by Herbert J. Mangrum, a queer little story about San Francisco. The Accusing Voice by Meredith Davis, the singular experience of Alan Defoe. The Sequel by Walter Scott Story, a new conclusion to Edgar Allan Poe's Cask of Amontillado. The Weaving Shadows by W. H. Holmes. Chet Burke's Strange Adventures in a Haunted House. Nimba, the Cave Girl by R. T. M. Scott. An odd, fantastic little story of the Stone Age. The Young Man Who Wanted to Die by question mark. An anonymous author submits a startling answer to the question, What comes after death? The Scarlet Knight by William Sanford. A tale with an eerie thrill. The Extraordinary Experiment of Dr. Calgroni by Joseph Faust and James Bennett Wooding. An eccentric doctor creates a frightful living thing. The Return of Paul Slavsky by Captain George Warburton Lewis. A creepy tale that ends in a shuddering, breathtaking way. The House of Death by F. Georgia Stroop. The Strange Secret of a Lonely Woman. The Gallows by I. W. D. Peters an out-of-the-ordinary story. The Skull by Harold Ward, a grim tale with a terrifying end. The Ape Man by James B. M. Clark, Jr., a jungle tale that is somehow different. Three Unusual Novelettes The Dead Man's Tale by Willard E. Hawkins an astounding yarn that will hold you spellbound and make you breathe fast with a new mental sensation. Ooze by Anthony M. Rudd, a remarkable short novel by a master of goose flesh fiction. Goose flesh fiction. The Chain by Hamilton Craigie. Craigie is at his best here, a strange novel in two parts, The Thing of a Thousand Shapes by Otis Adelbert Klein. Don't start this story late at night. Wow, that's a lot of fiction for 25 cents, which apparently is about $4.20 in today's money. It's a lot of fiction for $4.20. Wow, and reciting that list is also uh, thirsty work. So just excuse me a moment while I have a short drink. Ah, that's better. Thanks. None of these stories were familiar to me, with one notable exception which we shall discuss momentarily. And none of the authors were familiar either, with two exceptions. Farnsworth Wright became editor of Weird Tales in 1924, and while he published many of the magazine's most famous authors, he is also remembered for having turned down Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness and the shadow over Innsmouth, he apparently preferred shorter stories. Wright also hired such notable illustrators as Margaret Brundage, Virgil Finley, and Hannes Bach, but he was probably a better editor than fiction writer. Otis Adelbert Klein is described by Wikipedia as, quote, a songwriter, an adventure novelist, and 
literary agent during the pulp era. Much of his work first appeared in the magazine Weird Tales. Klein was an amateur Orientalist and a student of Arabic, like his friend and sometime collaborator, E. Hoffman Price. Klein worked as an assistant editor for Weird Tales and wrote novels similar to those of Edgar Rice Burroughs, setting them on Venus and on Mars. He was also Robert E. Howard's agent. The only title that rang a bell with me was Ooze by Anthony M. Rudd, a remarkable short novel by a master of goose flesh fiction. I had heard of this story as some, such as the H.P. Lovecraft wiki, suggest that it might have been the inspiration for Lovecraft's The Dunwich Horror. As Ooze is set in a swamp and features a Cajun character named Rory, I wondered if it might also have inspired the swamp scene in The Call of Cthulhu. Anthony Melville Rudd would end up writing eight stories for Weird Tales, According to author G.W. Thomas, he was an editor and a prolific writer whose stories appeared in such pulps as Action Stories, Argosy, Black Mask, Blue Book, and Thrilling Wonder. I put links to a few audio recordings of Ooze in the description if you care to have a listen. Such was the March 1923 issue of the unique magazine, Weird Tales. All of the stories are available through the Project Gutenberg link in the description. If you read any of them, let me know how you like them, and let me know if there are any you think I should read here on the channel. I plan to continue going through every issue of Weird Tales month by month from now on, won't you join me? If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix Here, that's P X Here, while the music was the classic Ghost Processional by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. Thank you for listening. Thank you.